It's meeting to order. Madam Clerk. Commissioner Dodge. Here. Commissioner Lieberman. Commissioner Rice. Here. Let us stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. And we have um, some speakers today about the uh, Animal Resource Center adoption promotion. Would you like to come forward? Hello. <laughs> Hello. All right. So oh. my name is Lauren Sod. Hi, Lauren. Can you hear me better now? Yeah. Oh, yes. Um, okay. Sorry about that. Okay. We can hear you. Okay. Okay. All right. Now, um, 41,500 licenses were sold, sold overall, which is down significantly last year. The bulk of those licenses, about 28,000, were sold online, with the rest split roughly evenly between the Animal Resource Center and the main office. The Animal Resource Center sold about 5,500. The most sold in a single day was on uh, January 31st, which is the last day yeah. that they were available. Thank you. I, I was the one. I yeah. The one. And... Um, <laughs> On that day, there were 451 licenses sold, which is very impressive. Um, the most sold by a single person in one day was 139 by Deanna Day, and that is a total of 18 per hour. Oh my goodness. Yes. Wow. So, very many. And she also had the most sold overall by a single person throughout the whole season and she sold 1,668 licenses. Oh my goodness. Again, very impressive. And we are very impressed with our entire clerical staff for their hard work. Absolutely. Um, the highest sales by an officer was Chris Bird. He did this at a license sale event with 111 licenses sold wow. at one event. So that's pretty great. Um, in other news, our veterinary staff would like to remind everyone that February is Pet Dental Health Month. Just like people, doggy dental care is vital to a healthy and happy pet. So, um, fun fact too, we judge our dogs' ages by the state of their teeth. So if you want to keep them looking young and healthy, got to keep up with that dental care. <laughs> um, we are still having free adoptions thanks to a very generous donation around Christmas. If, um, if anyone would like to know how long it will last, um, we have about 50 left, which will most likely last until the end of this month. There were a total of 160 adoptions um, donated, which is insane. We're very thankful for that. Um, it's made it so that so many people have been able to take home dogs, and it's brought in a lot of people that wouldn't oh generally think to come to our shelter. Um, 
currently we have 55 dogs available for adoption and this dog we have with us her name is pup pup and she is available for adoption right now she's just the sweetest thing i believe yeah. that um we said that she is two years old um and <laughs> she is just so lovely she does have an, a little ear infection in her right ear right now, so I wouldn't pet on that ear. But, Steve, would you like to let them see? Yeah, we can turn the phone. If you're, yeah? if you're okay with her coming up there. Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. I don't want anybody getting white fur all over their nice clothes today. But she Hello, doesn't, Papa. She doesn't How are you? She just jumps right up and laughs. How are you? Oh, how are you? <laughs> I know, oh, big girl. Jesus. I know, big girl. Is there any way you can get down there so that the Somebody camera can see there. the dog? Hey, we'll, we'll bring it down here. And, uh, can they see? Yeah. Right over there. Can they see? Yeah. That's a nice looking dog. I know you can't see her now because she's loading up. But that's a nice looking dog. Friendly, sweet. Oh, she's very friendly. Oh, yeah. oh look. <laughs> look at that face. And she's about two years old? Yes. Okay. Um, are there any questions I can answer for any of you? Did you say that the license tags were less this year? Yes. Mm. Um, yes. Significantly. 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 Mm. Uh, the county overall sold about 52,000 last year, and thus far this year we sold about 41,000. Mm. Hmm. Now the year's obviously not over, but <clears throat> we hope to get rid of that by the end of the day. Yeah. 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 Wow. Mm. Wow. Mm. I don't like to okay. hear that. Well, there has to be someone out there just looking for an adorable pup to add yeah. to their family. Two years old is still kind of a pup in yeah. my mind. They're all puppies. I know. Yeah. Oh, I know. She's a sweetie. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you yeah. for coming and uh, giving us an update. Appreciate all you do. Mm -hmm. And ever, anyone out there watching or you know anybody, please tell them to check out. We have, if not her, there's 54 others yeah, right. yes. available for, uh, to add to your family. Mm -hmm. We would love that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Steve, give our thanks to everybody at the ARC yeah. for every, all the work that they do. Thank you. All right. County Engineer. Good afternoon, Commissioners, Administrator, ladies and gentlemen. We have a number of resolutions today. The first is Resolution 23-212, authorizing the closing of Germantown Middletown Pike between Sugar Street and State Route 725, lasting approximately 13 weeks for bridge reconstruction. And 213 is to authorize a lease agreement with Moore Partners LLP for the Engineer Inspector's Field Office for approximately 1,500 square feet of space located at 8575 North Dixie Drive at a rate of $1,385 per month through March 31st of 2026. Then we have some agreements to authorize. The first is with uh, is a 214 with Brumbaugh Construction, Inc. for the Airway Road Bridge Replacement Project in the city of Riverside at their lowest and best bid of $1,798,789 through October 20th of 2024. 215 is with Barrett Paving and Materials, Inc. for the Asphalt Concrete Resurfacing Program countywide at their lowest and best bid of $2,916,996. $116,996.63 through June 30th of 2023. And 216 is with Barrett Paving Materials, Inc. for their Frederick Pike resurfacing project in Harrison and Butler Townships at their lowest and best bid of $362,569.56 through May 26th of 2023. That one is a federally funded project. That's why it's a separate resolution. Okay, move to approve. 
I second. All those in favor say aye. 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 County Sheriff. Thank you, Commissioners. Under the County Sheriff, we have Resolution 217, accept a grant from the U.S. Department of Justice for the FY22 Connect and Protect Law Enforcement Health Response Program in the amount of 533333 We also have Resolution 218, approve a collect collective bargaining agreement with the Fraternal Order of Police, Ohio Labor Council, through December 31st, 2025. We also have about six or seven authorization agreements. Uh, resolution 219, Fairborn Police Department for the use of Sheriff's Office Regional Training Center Fire and Range. Resolution 220, Sydney Police Department for the use of Sheriff's Office Regional Training Center Fire and Range. Resolution 221, U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement for the use of Sheriff's Office Regional Training Center Firing Range. Resolution 222, Johnson Controls for the monitoring, maintenance, and inspection of the fire alarms located at the Training Center in an amount not to exceed $1,187.61. Resolution 223, Critical Mention for Critical Mention Software in an amount not to exceed $5,000 through March 31st, 2025. In resolution 224, Guardian RFID for the advanced inmate logging and tracking solution in an amount not to exceed $116,870.75 through February 20th, 2024, with options to renew. Move to approve. I second. All those in favor say aye. 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 County Prosecutor. Thank you, Commissioners. On behalf of the Montgomery County Prosecutor, Matt Heck Jr., we have two special prosecutor agreements that need to be renewed. Resolution uh, 225 is to authorize an agreement with Tom R. Schiff of Hawkwalden Schiff LLC to act as special prosecuting attorney and providing legal counsel to the Humane Society of Greater Dayton an amount not to exceed $5,000 through December 31st of 2023. And 226 is to amend the agreement with David Ackerman, Lisa Salzberg, and Linda Singer of Motley Rice LLC to assist the prosecutor's office in providing legal counsel and assistance to the Board of County Commissioners through December 31st of 2023. Move to approve. I second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Juvenile Court. Good afternoon. Thank you, Commissioners. On behalf of Helen Wallace, Administrative Judge, we have two items for your consideration. Item 23-0227, authorize an agreement with Montgomery County Educational Services to provide educational services and assessments for juveniles involved in the juvenile court schools in an amount not to exceed 27000 through December 31st, 2023 and 23-0228 roca incorporated for rewire cbt training and coaching an amount not to exceed 192,250 dollars through december 31st 2023. i move to approve i second all those in favor say aye aye, aye. monday community correctional institution thank you commissioners under monday community correctional institution we have two resolutions resolution 229 accept a grant from the Ohio Office of Criminal Justice Services for funds available under the Residential Substance Abuse Treatment Program in the amount of $234,623.99. <clears throat> Excuse me, we also have Resolution 230, authorizing an agreement with Humor A. Bassar LLC to provide EMDR therapy services in an amount not to exceed 39000 through December 31st, 2023. Move to approve. A second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Miami Valley Regional Crime Lab. Under the Miami Valley Regional Crime Lab, we have Resolution 231, authorize the purchase from AWARE ABIS for laboratory maintenance services to support an automated fingerprint identification system, including hardware and software in any amount not exceeding 308500 through March 1st, 2028. Move to approve. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Data processing. Under data processing, we have two authorization of purchases. Resolution 232, Dell Marketing LP for Microsoft EA annual renew, renewal services for the data processing department in an amount not to exceed $295,084.52 through February 28th, 2024. And Resolution 233, Insight Public Sector, Inc., for annual Nasuni annual cloud subscription services for the data processing department 
in an amount not to exceed 57,000 through April 30th, 2024. Move to approve. I second. All those in favor say aye. 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 County Administrator. Under the County Administrator, under the Clerk's Office, we have approved the minutes of the meetings on February 7th, 2023. Resolution 234, approval of bills, and Resolution 235, approval of travel and expenses. Both those lists are available in the Clerk's Office. Move to approve. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Administrative Services. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Uh, we have a variety of resolutions for you today, beginning with Resolution 236. This is the approval of personnel actions. This list is available in the Clerk's Office. 237 submits a grant to the Ohio Department of Job and Family Services for the Responsible Fatherhood Month grant to provide resources for the Montgomery County Fatherhood Initiative in an amount not to exceed $2,000. 238 authorizes a grant agreement with the Ohio Emergency Management Agency for funds made available under the FEMA Emergency Management Performance Grant, also known as EMPG in the amount of $221,738 to December 31st of 2023. 239 authorizes an agreement with David J. Spradlin for the services as the license plate reader database coordinator for the regional license plate reader program for Ohio Homeland Security Region 3 in an amount not to exceed $39,384 through June 30th of 2023. Resolution 240 solicits bids for a water meter test bench for the Environmental Services Department. Resolution 241, request proposals for a license plate reader database coordinator for the Office of Emergency Management. The following resolutions amend agreements beginning with 242 with Schlotman Enterprises for filing services by adding $9,400 to the original amount for a revised total of $17,400 and extending the term through June 30th of 2023. Resolution 243 is uh, with the Sheriff in the Montgomery County Solid Waste District to establish funding costs for 2023 and 2024 and correct the term of the agreement to December 31st of 2024. Uh, the following resolutions authorize purchases, uh, beginning with 244, with Safeware for video management system services for the administrative building in an amount not to exceed $132,069.07, and 245 with Safeware for video management system services for the rival parking garage in an amount not to exceed $512,002.69. 246 is with Thales DIS Incorporated for annual maintenance for the APHIS system for the Miami Valley Regional Crime Lab in an amount not to exceed $77,817.26. 247 is with Ohio Valley AV for audiovisual equipment and installation for the Madison Lakes Training Center renovation in an amount not to exceed $68,184.66. And last is 248 with DeBraw Kempel Incorporated for chiller preventative maintenance for the facilities management department in an amount not to exceed $54,320 through December 31st of 2025. The following resolutions authorize price agreements for the 2023 water treatment chemicals for the Environmental Services Department through December 31st of 2023. Uh, the first is 249 with Miami Products and Chemical Company. Next is 250 PVS Chemical Solutions Incorporated. 251 with PVS Knollwood Chemicals Incorporated. 252 with PVS Technologies Incorporated. And last is 253 with Bonded Chemicals Incorporated. Uh, the following resolutions authorize change orders. Uh, the first is 254 with Becker Construction Incorporated for the Administration Building Restroom ADA Renovation Project by adding $95,930 to the original amount for a revised total of $1,533,430. 255 is with Starco Incorporated for the GL HVAC Project by extending the contract through October 27th of 2023. Uh, resolution 256 is with APG Office Furnishings Incorporated for the Trotwood Furnishings Project by increasing the original amount by $9,796.24 for a revised total of $297,774.62. And we have two late items. The first is 280, uh, both of these authorized agreements. The first is 280 with National Center for State Courts for a needs assessment for the Common Police Court in an amount not to exceed $90,000 through September 30th of 2023. And 281 is with Johnson Controls Fire Protection LP for fire alarm monitoring for the Troutwood Court. Whoa, move to approve. I second that. All those in favor say aye. 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 Environmental Services. Good afternoon, Commissioners. For Environmental Services, we have Resolution 257. Submit an application to participate in the Ohio Water Development Authority. 
OWDA Local Government Agency Loan Program for a loan in the amount of $275,957 and authorize a cooperative agreement with OWDA for implementation of the Dell Ridge Water Main Replacement Project. Resolution 258, amend the agreement with Strand and Associates for consulting services for the Woodman Dorothy Siphon Project, extending the term of the agreement to December 31st, 2024, at no additional cost to the county. Resolution 259, accept the subdividers contract from EROP LLC for the EROP LLC car wash development. Resolution 260, accept the 20% performance bond for the Washington Trace Section 16 development in the amount of $53,205.80. The following two to authorize agreements. The first is Resolution 261 with Choice One Engineering for preparation of detailed construction plans and supplemental specifications for the Shorter Road Area Lead Service Line Replacement Project in the amount not to exceed $147,750 through December 31st, 2024. And the next one is Resolution 262 with Kinnison Excavating Inc. for construction of the Delridge Water Main Replacement Project at their lowest and best bid of $724,995 through October 31st, 2024. And the last two are to release 100% of the cash surety and subdividers contracts First is Resol Resolution 263 with Hallmark Campus Communities for the Gateway Lofts Project. Resolution 264 with North Clayton Development LLC for the Villages of North Clayton Section 3 Project. I second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Human Services. Good afternoon. We have for the Human Services Planning and Development Department, Resolution 265, which is to publish a notice of public hearing to share the draft of the Home American Rescue Plan Program Allocation Plan to take public comments and submit the plan to HUD at the end of the comment period. And the public hearing will be March the 6th at 1030 over at the Human Services Planning and Development Department at the Rybo Building located at 117 South Main Street here in Dayton, Ohio. Resolution 266 is to amend the agreement with Elizabeth New Life Center for the Parent Cafe Program by modifying the articles of the contract and increasing funds by $17,200.46 for a revised total of $66,071.91. Under the Department of Job and Family Services, we have Resolution 267 to amend the agreement with the Bonadino Group for consulting services by extending the term of the agreement to December 31st of 2023. 268 is to authorize a price agreement with Northwoods for one base annual support, compass capture and form support in an amount not to exceed $132,195 through February 28th of 2024. We also have um, authorizing agreements with 269 Home of Unity LLC for substitute care services through March 31st of 2024. 270 with Richard Bromberg, PhD for clinical services in an amount not to exceed 100,000 through um, July 31st of 2023. Resolution 271, Adoption Star, Inc. for adoption services for three children in an amount not to exceed $3,500 through December 31st of 2023. And under Stillwater Center, we have Resolution 272 to request proposals for buses with lifts and Resolution 273 to extend the price agreement with Cirrus Consulting doing business as auto health care staffing for nursing services through January 31st of 2024. Move to approve. I second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Business services. Thank you, Commissioner. Under business services, community and economic development, I have four resolutions for you. First one is 0274 authorizes an agreement with the Big Hoopla, Inc. for promotion and marketing of the NCAA first four events, Dayton Initiative, in an amount not to exceed $75,000 through December 31st, 2023. The next one is 275 rescind resolution 170847, dated June 20th, 2017, which approved an economic development government equity edge agreement with the City of Englewood. 
276 for sentence resolution 220287 dated February 22nd, 2022, approved an economic development edge agreement with the city of Kettering. And 0277 rescinds resolution number 22-1477, dated September 27th, 2022, which approved an economic development government equity edge agreement with the city of Dayton. Hmm. Move to approve. I second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Under the county commissioners, we have resolution 23-0278 to appoint Geraldine Bekees and Danielle Sizeloff to the Housing Advisory Board through June 30th, 2024. And um, Resolution 279, confirm the appointments of Chris McClintock, John Morris, George Ann Godsey, and Michael Moyer by the Montgomery County Township Association to the Economic Development Government Equity, otherwise known as Advisory Committee, for three-year terms through December 31st, 2025. Move to approve. All those in favor say aye. 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 Comments by citizens. We do have one citizen, uh, Willie Feaster. Please come to the podium. State your name and you will have three minutes. <clears throat> Willie Feaster. Once again, I must uh, bring up this issue. Don't nobody want to talk about it. The issue of Boost Mobile, the man getting shot that was breaking into Boost Mobile. The questions are still have not been answered. Why didn't that man, when he called 911, never tell the dispatch he had put two bullets in that man? Why heavens not came out? Where was this man shot at? Was he shot in the front or the back? Why has it not came out? Where's the weapon? that this man's supposed to have. Who is doing this investigation? That The person got killed still have rights. Despite he was breaking in a, a boost mobile two o'clock in the morning, the man, y'all already know the story, the man came down, confronted him with a loaded weapon, which is premeditated. He already knew it was gonna be a confrontation, but still, don't nobody wanna ask you, answer these questions. The person that committed it, he still, it was a human being, and he still is entitled to due process. Now we're going to go to the principal over here at Walkerman that slammed that boy last week. Don't nobody want to get into that. No commissioner from the city to the county want to answer their questions. Why did that principal, yes, the boy was suspended. Y'all already know. Y'all already know he walked on the grounds. Y'all seen the four seconds. He picked that boy up and slammed him. That is assault. You, he ain't no different than me, you, 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 we all are citizens. That kid still have rights. What that principal did to him was assault. You can't get around that, because I said it, and I said it again. If I do it, what happens to me? I'm going straight to the county jail. They're going to I'm not going to get a pass, but he got a pass. How could you do that? Principal or not, he is not allowed to just walk up and pick somebody up and body slam them like that. He should have been charged, arrested, just like anybody else. Because he's a principal, he's a lot. You can't go around beating up no students. I don't care if they was out there fighting. He still can't pick that boy up and slam him in that manner, hard. Y'all seen the four seconds just like I did. Pound that boy off the ground like that. But he's not being held accountable. Why? Why is he not being held accountable? And anybody, any ordinary citizen, because I said it at the city, had that kid went up there and bust him upside his head, what would have happened to that kid? All everybody in here know. That little boy would have been handcuffed, ran straight across the street to the detention with no questions asked. If he ever walked up there, today if he walked up there and smacked that person, what would happen to that kid? He going to jail. No questions asked. But then they want to know why these kids go off like they do, going in these places, doing the things they do. Thank you, Mr. Feaster. Thank Feaster. you, Mr. Feaster. All right. County Administrator. Thank you, Commissioners. Um, I'd like to give a shout out to our Talent Services team and our Workforce Division. Uh, they had a very successful construction job fair last week at Sinclair College. 
Uh, we had about 200 job seekers registered, uh, and many of them walked in without pre-registering, as you know, commissioners. 61 employers were there, uh, and we had many, many people come by uh, this specialized job fair, and we've had this for quite some time. Uh, many of those employers hired people on the spot, which was, which was pretty spectacular. People got jobs right on the spot. Um, and it takes a tremendous amount of effort in planning, promotion, uh, to execute these job fairs. This is a partnership with our employer community and with the job seekers. Uh, it's critical to connecting so many of our citizens to employment. So I'd like to thank you, commissioners, for your support. Um, as always, you always support us, making sure that we're reaching out in the community to try to find people jobs. And also thanks for our workforce talent team uh, and the services that they provide to everyone. Thank you, commissioners. Mm -hmm. Well, I stopped by and it was uh, very successful and there were actually lines at some of the uh, employers that were there. So it was a good, um, you know, it was a good event. And um, I've talked to some of the staff and they said it's the best one they've seen now for a while. So things are picking up. So it was very good. Yeah. Good. Thank you. And last week we celebrated Valentine's Day at the Haynes Center. And I, I have to give a shout out to the group that always makes that day so special for us. It's the Dayton Section National Council of Negro Women. They come every year and they deliver teddy bears for our children in foster care. Now this year they gave us over 350 stuffed animals, which were provided to our caseworkers. You know, it was a great help to them as they perform their challenging jobs. They pass these little furry friends out throughout the year to children who are either entering care or going through some other very difficult times. You know, it's such a comfort to the kids. So thank you to these women for doing this for 20 years and then their generous support for our children. Yeah, that's always wonderful. Oh, yeah. Event. Yeah, it's always a good event. Great yeah. pics. You guys took some good pictures on Pardon me? Great pictures. 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 Were there? Uh -huh. Okay, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Let me look at it first. <laughs> Well, I also would like to add a few comments. So um, we're all so proud of Mike Newsom, uh, who's our Fatherhood Initiative Director. He was honored last Thursday by Parity Incorporated as one of the region's top 10 African-American males. And it was a, a wonderful uh, celebration. Uh, we've all known Mike for a long time and know that this honor is certainly well-deserved. So it's, it's wonderful when one of our own, who we know um, is someone that, you know, we should all look up to and for the work that he's done. He's been a champion for our area fathers and he is so passionate about linking dads with resources so that their, their kids can thrive. And the truth is if their kids thrive, they also um, certainly benefit by the role that they can play in their lives. So it really um, helps both so tremendously to um, have that bond. And um, he also helps the dads with finding employment, mm -hmm. um, along with how to handle parenting time, if it's something you're not used to, how they can get uh, licenses and different things they need um, reinstated, um, how they can take advantage of public benefits, and honestly, just remove all the barriers to being a successful um, citizen and parent and help them along the way. Um, so we are proud of Mike and proud of all the work that he's done because um, he's not the only one, but, but Mike certainly has changed. It's that ripple effect of he helps, each, each individual he helps, helps generations to come, quite honestly. So bravo to Mike for the honor, and, and we're proud of you. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I also uh, want to mention that there is a new exhibit out at the Dayton Metro Library's main branch. It's called e Evicted. And um, I have served on the Evicted Task Force that the mayor of Dayton formed oh, probably two or three years ago now. And Matthew Desmond is um, the author who wrote the book Evicted. And this whole um, is a public display that's been touring the country. And its final stop is Dayton, Ohio. And it is in the front, on the main floor. If you go in, we went down and, and looked at it. And it's quite impressive. 
And so I encourage everyone to make a stop down there. It'll be here until, um, I think, like the middle of April. So there's plenty of time uh, to go down there. And it really, we know we're facing a housing crisis right now. And uh, we actually talked about it this morning, of how there just is not enough affordable housing uh, for citizens. It's not unique to Dayton or Montgomery County. Um, actually, when we were at the National Association of Counties Conference last uh, week, that was a huge topic of this is a national crisis, uh, that there are so few units uh, for people that they can afford. And so uh, we really think that uh, if you go down there, you'll not only learn, but it's a call to action for all of us uh, to be not only sensitive to it and empathetic for how people end up, um, you know, homeless. Uh, it, it is often not their fault. Um, it is a, a series of consequences of which they have no control. And so we need as a group, and we're the housing authority board, is going to take another look at how we can come together. So go check out the, the exhibit. I hope it will um, give you food for thought. Talk with your family and neighbors about it. But what can we do here? to begin to um, change it, improve it, every little bit will matter, so check it out. Um, also, NACO was wonderful. This is my first time back since NACO, and I, I believe it was one of my strongest, I got the most out of that, those sessions last week, and I always get a lot out of it, so that's saying a lot, um, but when we, when we go to the, the benefit for me, I believe, is that not only do you hear good ideas of things that we all struggle with, uh, but you also find out we're not alone. And that the things that we find so challenging and um, you know complicated, a lot of other people are struggling with the same thing. So there's some fellowship in knowing that we all are trying to go in the right direction and we just have to keep working harder together. So a great organization, a great meeting, and we were well represented there. So I don't, is there any other comments? If not, I think our next meeting, well, let's see, will be Thursday. So take note, it is not next Tuesday. It will be on Thursday, March 2nd at 1.30 p.m. And if, no other business. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. I'll second that. All in favor say aye. Aye. We are adjourned. Have a great week.